simple, simple stuff, okay? What was the point of that? Well, what I want to point out to you is, the thing I'm actually not interested in is, is the numbers, which is why the numbers are all very simple numbers. The things I'm really interested in are the signs, okay? So for example, I want you to have a look at these two here. These two here. Do you see that what they have in common is that all three numbers at the beginning, all three numbers, they're all positive. Do you notice that, right? So I've got a positive, a positive, and a positive, right? Now when you multiply three positive numbers together, it doesn't matter if they're all one, or if they're all two, or if they're all different, or if they're all whatever, okay? You know at the end, what you must end up with is also positive. Do you agree with that? Like there are no negatives that can get a look in, okay? It's never gonna sneak up on you somehow. Positive times positive times positive will always end up with positive. Is that okay? All right, now you can see I've got some patterns coming up here as well, right? These next two, right? Positive, negative, positive. If there's just one negative hiding in there somewhere, right? Then you know, whatever the numbers are, I don't care what the size of the numbers are. I care about the signs of the numbers. Not the size, but the sign. Um, you're always going to get, well, if I have a positive, negative, and a positive, the sign of my answer will be negative, right? Does that make sense? Okay. Couple more just to finish, right? You can see if I've got two negatives and a positive, negative, positive, negative, then my answer, those two negatives, are going to cancel out. And then my last one, if I've got three negatives, then of course my final answer when I've multiplied everything together will be negative. negative. Okay, now, this pattern here, right, of if there's an odd number of negatives, like one or three, right, if there's an odd number, then my answer will be negative, okay? This is enormously useful when we come to graph, okay? So here's what I want you to look at. Remember we took these two graphs here, okay? When we divide it up into factors, we divide it up into x minus four and x plus three, okay? We can graph those factors onto our original graph, okay? So for example, um, with, my, with my fixed up intercepts, thank you, Aaron, okay? Um, y equals x minus four. If I just ask you to graph that line alone, where would it belong on my graph? Where would it go? It's going to be passing through this intercept, isn't it, right? And y equals x is just going to be increasing up like this. So go back to your original graph, and if you have a different color, um, or if you, have a di if you only have like a pencil, just do this lightly. I want you to draw the line y equals x minus 4 on top of your parabola, okay? y equals x minus 4. And this is not the graph that I'm actually wanting. I want the whole parabola, right? But this is a factor line of the graph x minus 4 is a factor, and that is the line that represents the factor, okay? Now, that was x minus 4, I also have x plus 3 on there, right? Where does that factor line go? It's, um, it's going to pass through the other intercepts, right? Like this guy over here, x plus 3, that's what it looks like. I know because it's like x but 3 units higher, okay? Now here's how I'm going to use these two factor lines, right? Remember, I said, okay, uh, these, are, these are with three, that was a trickier example. If I've got two negative numbers, two negative numbers, and I don't know what their sizes are, if I multiply them together, the product of two negative numbers will always be, what sign does it have? It will always be positive, right? So can you see, this blue line really comes from, take this green line, this factor, and multiply it by this green line, which is the other factor. That's what this says, right? So over here, I'm just going to draw a little sort of dotted line in here, in here. Have a look over here to the left of x equals negative 3, just over here. Okay. Do you see that one of my factors is negative and the other factor is also negative? Do you see that? So I've got two factors and they're both negative. But you just told me a negative times a negative is positive, right? So therefore I know my actual graph should pass through up here in this positive area up here. Let me say that again, right? These two negative factors, there they are, factor, factor, and there are the lines that represent them. When you multiply them together, you should get something positive, which in fact is what I get. That's my parabola. You guys knew that from the beginning, okay? Once I cross over this line, I go from negative, left of negative three to the right of negative three. What are my two factors doing? What are the signs of the two factors in this in-between space? Do you see one's positive 
and one's negative, one's above the axis and one's below. So if you multiply a positive number and a negative number, what will the sign of the result be? Negative. It'll be negative, positive times negative, there's only one negative. So negative is under the axis. So my actual graph has to pass through this region I've just shaded, which indeed it does, because you knew it was a parabola, right? Last one, have a look on the right hand side. Once I cross over this factor, positive, and this guy's also positive, clearly he's positive, right? So positive times positive is? Positive. So I'm up here, which of course is what the parabola does, right? So you can see, one, two, three, had I not known it was a parabola, had it been like some weirdo looking shape, right? I can know it has to pass through these green shaded regions, okay? Let me do it one more time, we'll do it a little bit quicker for this one, and then we're gonna do one without knowing what the graph actually looks like. One, two, three, there are my factors, right? So where will my factor lines go? Y equals X, that just goes to the origin, right? Uh, y equals x plus 2 is going to go a little bit higher through that intersect <coughs> and y equals x plus 3 will go a little bit higher than that. Here are my 1, 2, 3 factors. Okay? I'm going to draw some vertical lines through the places where those factors change sign, go from negative to positive. I've already got the axis there. Okay. Now look with me, right? the whole graph, oh I rubbed it off, <laughs> the whole graph here, right? It's made up of these three factors, and over here on the left, what are the signs of all three of my factors? Negative. They're all negative. Do you see they're all below the axis? One, two, three. They're all under here, which is negative. So negative times negative times negative, of course, is three negatives. It's an odd number of negatives. So that'll be negative, yeah? So I'm down here. I cross over, right? When I go from here to here, I still have three factors, but look. Two are negative and one is positive. You see that? It's above the axis now. So what's negative times negative times positive? It's positive. Okay? In fact, you can see, I don't need to ask this question anymore. Every time I go past a boundary, I change sign. I go negative, positive. My next one is obviously going to be negative. And then my last one is positive. Right? So I have these four regions that my graph has to pass through. One, two, three, four which indeed is what that graph was doing. You can see the blue line we drew in the first place. 